Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about the subject of reflections in photographs. So quite often you can have a really great photograph um, of something that might be <laughs> have quite a lot of reflections in it. And the first thing you notice when you get your photo back to Lightroom is uh, a great big uh, reflection of yourself <laughs> in the image. And that can be quite a common problem um, if you're photographing anything kind of shiny or mirrored. Getting rid of uh, those reflections can be a little bit tricky, but now, thanks to the improvements in Photoshop recently, it's now actually very easy to remove reflections. So let me give you an example, and uh, so let's dive right in. So I'm gonna start here in Lightroom, and we have this image. It's not a brilliant photograph. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that, but this is just to give you an example of the technique. Okay, so here we have, this is quite a famous um, sculpture in Trinity College in Dublin. And it is this shiny cracked sphere. And um, as you can see, if you look closely here, here's me taking the photograph and here's all the other tourists trying to do the same thing. So if we want to get rid of the reflections here, um, Normally you might go and try and do something like use the erase tool in Photoshop or in Lightroom. So let me just give you an example. I'm gonna zoom in here and just like try and let's go over this guy. Uh, that's not bad. Um again yeah, it's not bad, but you can see it starts to go a bit haywire and you kinda of, it just ends up cloning parts of other people. You end up cloning over parts of the building and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not it's not an ideal way to do it. So the other way you would traditionally go about doing this is you'd open up in Photoshop and you'd painstakingly um, clone and stamp the reflections out. And it can take quite a while. So the new generative fill feature in Photoshop actually does a really good job at get, getting rid of reflections. So uh, let me just undo this and I am going to pop over to Photoshop. Okay, so we're in Photoshop now and all we have to do is, I'm gonna zoom in, and what you want to do is, rather than trying to take them all out with one go, um, is if you go like a group of people by a group of people. So, start with myself, I'm gonna go generative fill. Now, you can mostly get away with just not putting anything in here. Um, I am going to type in remove reflections. Yeah, uh, sometimes this can have an effect and sometimes it doesn't, um, but we're just going to do it anyway. And of course, generative fill takes a little while to get going. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I am now gone. And don't forget to check the variations when you're doing this, because sometimes um, the first one won't necessarily be the best. So in this case, I think the second one here is the best. Okay, so then over here we have a one that would be quite tricky because it's right at the edge. Okay, so there we have that scene, and that is perfect first go. Don't need to touch anything there. So on to the next one. Now, if you find that sometimes when you're doing this, it gets stuck halfway through the progress bar, what you should do is cancel it and just kind of redraw the your selection and um, do it again. And sometimes that works. Um, other times, just removing the instruction will work. Okay, so again, all we have to do now is just kind of keep going through these. So one of the things that um, I think I said already is um, it's important to kind of do this in small chunks. And the main reason for that is because, um, well, basically uh, generative fill in Photoshop um, is limited in resolution um, for each kind of filled area. So if you do it in smaller chunks, you don't kind of get a resolution mismatch that you can get otherwise. Um, and that's the main reason for that. So sometimes you might find that it's not exactly what you want or that there's some errors in it. Um, all you have to do is just hit generate again and that will usually solve the problem. Okay, so that one's much better. Okay, and finally we've got this last little bit in here. Okay. So you can now see that the reflections are totally gone and it is a much better image now that we don't have all those pesky humans um, <laughs> mucking it up. And... All we have to do now is uh, save it. So save it and it will send it back to Lightroom. And then we can do some final tweaks to it once we're back in Lightroom. Back over to Lightroom. And now here's our image. The one last thing I want to do to this image and uh, 
is to just kind of increase the depth of field here and we're going to use the new lens blur feature for that because I shot this with a small sensor camera and kind of with everything in focus is kind of distracting away from things and that's where Adobe's other new AI tool the cool lens blur feature comes into its own uh, as perfect for this kind of situation so I'm just going to scroll down to lens blur here and click apply and give it a second to calculate and drum roll please and as you can see straight away that's blurred the background and it looks much better however if we look in over here we can see it's missing a bit so uh, we can actually fix this by if, um, manually brushing this little bit in um, so if you go down here to the refine tab and we want to add to the blur and and keep the brush fairly small and just very carefully brush over this now this takes a little bit of care and finesse um, and you might need to zoom in quite a bit to get this rush so um, I've just roughly done this and perhaps not been as careful as I should be uh, it does the job for this demonstration purposes um, and as you can see that looks much better I'm just going to tweak kind of the bokeh here because I find uh, this one kind of looks more realistic and yeah there we have it um, you could kind of keep tweaking the image here don't really need to do much to it I mean like I said it's not a brilliant image I could like I could do it some kind of fancy toning or a preset or something uh, let's just have a look at some of our presets see if anything kind of sticks here we could give it like a film tone um, I'm gonna go with this and I'm just gonna tone it down a little bit Okay, so there we have it. There is our image with the uh, reflections completely removed and um, also the background blurred using the new AI tools in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, and just to compare, there's the original and here is our finished version. And this trick, of course, works with all sorts of images um, of reflections. So to give you another example, again, uh, not a particularly brilliant photo but uh, you can see here you have my big noggin um, in this image and again you could try and get rid of it using the tools in Lightroom but it would just be a big mess and you'd be missing lots of the stuff but if I pop this over to Photoshop and, da -da -da, and zoom in and all I do is just roughly outline me and go generate a file, generate. It's a bit of a waiting game, this is the only thing. <laughs> it's the only downside. And there we go, as if by magic, I have disappeared. <laughs> so you can see, uh, it's much better than the old method of trying to clone and stamp everything. Um, and it's great for instances where you have tricky reflections or combinations of reflections. So for example, here you can see there's um, the tram kind of going by in the background and all the other kind of Christmas decorations and they're still there. Again, just a demonstration image. I know it is a terrible photo, um, but again, just a demonstration. Let's just give you one more example. There was this photo of this kind of cool sign on the door. I like the font, it's the designer in me. Um, but again, we have these reflections here and they're kind of ew, awful. But using the same trick, I got rid of them. So, <laughs> as you can see, it's a powerful way and a very simple way to get rid of reflections. Um, the only thing I would say to you is just be a bit patient because sometimes um, generative fill can be a bit of a pain and takes a while to update. But other than that, it is very useful. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you have found this tutorial useful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe and also check out some of the rest of my Lightroom videos. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.